This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... You've got a couple of things on your mind, something you were telling me that you are very happy about and something you're very angry about. Let's start with the good news. Um, well, the good news is that I'm, I'm in New Hampshire. Uh, when I read about uh, the, the nonsense that's going around in other states, Uh, their budget crisis and the extreme that they're taking to uh, to close their budget gaps and uh, the oppression that's going on. Um, I you know I feel a lot better because I'm you know I, I'm kind of insulated by that because I'm in I'm not in those states I'm in New Hampshire where the violent monopoly here is at least less oppressive than other violent monopolies. How do you see that in your daily life? How does it play out? Um, the police presence, well, where I came from New York City, the police, the difference between the police presence here and the, pre uh, and the police presence in New York is uh, like night and day. Um, in New York, the police had boats and helicopters. Uh, they were out, out in full force all the time, I think. Uh, in, uh, here in Manchester, I think, uh, in I don't think I've seen a police officer unless they were undercover. I haven't seen a, a uniformed officer in about seven days. And I've definitely been out and about in this town, and uh, I think that's great. I think, you know, less cops, less, less police abuse. That's good. Uh, and you, you moved to, you, to New Hampshire, what, two years ago? Uh, about a year ago. Okay, all right. Well, welcome home, by the way. A little Thank late. Thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, and then on the other hand, though, you, you, you know, you're happy on the kind of on the state level, but you said you're angry on the federal level. Tell me what what's got you riled up. <laughs> well, um, the whole uh, debt ceiling, uh, so-called re re resolution. I uh, I don't know. I think. Uh, Obama kind of came off as a great compromiser, and the Republicans came off as greedy and stubborn. But uh, you know, in fact, uh, these Republicans—they're just—you uh, know—they're living up to their campaign promises because uh, their constituents have made their elect. You know, the people who voted them in made it clear that if they don't do what they said they were going to do, which is cut government spending. They're going to be re they can be voted out and replaced by people who will uh, uh, succeed where they fail. Uh, Obama, with Obama, there's no accountability because his position is safe. He's the incumbent. No other Democrat is going to run against him or going to be allowed to run against him. So he doesn't have to worry about that. You know, so this this, uh, this concept that competition increases accountability. I mean, this should definitely be spread to the rest of the public sector. Um, the other thing that bothers me about it is that uh, if Obama had kept his campaign promises, uh, uh, gradual troop withdrawal from uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, the clo closing of Guantanamo Bay, ending uh, federal raids on, uh, mar uh, on, on uh, mar medical marijuana dispensaries, he would have actually cut government spending if he had lived up to those promises. So he could have uh, fulfilled his promises and the promise of the Republicans, which would have beat them to the punch and made them look uh, obsolete and unnecessary. But he chose to not only increase the war, uh, those, two, those two wars, but start an entire new conflict in Libya under the guise of NATO. Well, can you think of a solution? Obama is causing various problems, uh, but can you think of a solution that would that would work for him? I guess you're kind of on that. You're kind of on that already. A solution that would work for him, that would be a win-win for him and for the people like you who are so upset at him. Um, just uh, do what he promised to do. I mean, I know you know I have a lot of uh, liberal Democratic friends back in New York who are angry with him. Uh, because uh, these two wars, these two pointless wars, we've got Bin Laden, we've got Saddam Hussein, why are we still here? Nobody can tell us this. 
Um, I, I mean, I think, like I said before, it would be a win-win because it would allow him to cut government spending. Uh, it wouldn't solve all our debt problems. But, you know, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that are being spent every year to drop bombs on these countries. And uh, it makes no sense. Uh, he could, uh, you know, he could uh, call off the war on drugs. He could, uh, or let, you know, just let the states decide what to uh, legalize, what to ban, and what to regulate. Um, you know, this would all cut government spending. This would all uh, help, uh, allow him to fulfill his campaign promises. Right now, his re-election campaign is 50-50. It could go either way, you know, the success of it. Uh, now he's, you know, but not fulfilling his campaign promises. He's uh, put his own career in jeopardy, which I think is stupid. Um, not that, it, not exactly that I'm rooting for him, but, you know, if he's, you know, looking out for his own self-interest, then he should be doing what he said he was uh, going to do. Well, one thought that I had was that uh, possibly uh, what Daniel was talking about at the beginning of the video might be part of a solution as well. Uh, when you talk about how New Hampshire is so nice and free and everything, New Hampshire is sort of like America's quasi-frontier now. It's taking the place, it's doing, serving the role that the Old West, starting to serve the role that the Old West served in its time. So my thinking is a win-win solution for the feds and for at least, you know, liberty lovers, uh, is that they let that frontier develop, that they let this uh, um, pioneering place sort of um, bloom the way they let the Old West bloom. Um, and that might be something that get, this is, provides a release valve for people who are angry at the federal government. So the government wins by having its release valve, the people win by having a place of freedom.